Hey everyone, here we are, Roman the Sudoku guy again with this time tutorial number 70. Well, we're only getting up, aren't we? We've got lots more to do though. Now, you may remember back when I did uh, the W wing, it was tutorial number 64, I've had a couple of people ask me, how did you work out what to get rid of? In, uh, in, in the W wing. So I thought I'd just cover a bit more about that and I'm going to do it by way of showing you another chain. We could have a chain with 3, 5, 9, 11 and so on. Many, many uh, links to the chain. We're going to be talking about strong links and weak links again and also I'm going to mention to you uh, the term conjugate pair. Now, in this particular example I'm going to show you we're going to have an open end link and we'll have uh, the end will will be this will be one end right here. Uh, we'll put this. We call this the end. It could be the end point. How's that? It could be the beginning too. Um, and so we make this a strong link. Just let re re revise again. A strong link has only two possible little numbers in a row, column, or block. And a conjugate pair is the same. In this case, this row only has two little fives, so we can call it a strong link. Now, a strong, you start a chain with a strong link and you finish with a strong link. But now I'm going to put in a uh, weak link and it's going to go from here to here. Now, a weak link means that there are other fives in that block, not just two. That's the definition of a weak link, just a revision there. Then we can have a, a strong link here. Let me see. Uh, we'll have a strong link that goes from here down to here because in this column there's only two fives possible. Okay? And um, from there we can have a weak link that goes from, let me see now, we can have a weak link that goes from here up to here and we can call it a weak link again because there are many other fives in that block. But we can join the two up and then we finish up with a strong link from this five to this five is a strong link. Okay? And this is also an end point. And I have to say a thank, big thanks, uh, thank you to as uh, Sudoku Swami, uh, he, he pointed out what we, end, what we mean by endpoints too. Okay, so now we have a strong, a weak, a strong, a weak, and a strong. Starting and finishing with a strong. Now the interesting thing here, you, know, you need to know that with a strong link, if this is a a 5, that can't be a 5. In other words, that's true, that is false. Same with a weak link. If that is a weak link, that would be, a, that would be, that would, doesn't have a 5, but this will become the 5. If that is a strong link, if that's a 5, this cannot be a 5. That's a true, that will be false. If this is a 5, then that cannot be a 5. If that cannot be a 5, this must be a 5. So, you, that's the way it works. Now, here is an interesting thing. There are several places where a 5 can be seen by this one and this one, the endpoints. And I'm just going to put them in for you. There's a 5, you can let's put a 5 in here for fun, and a 5 in there for fun. The, the fives that you see here, and I'm going to circle them, with green. The fives that you see here and here can be eliminated. I'm going to circle them like that so you know these are the ones we can get rid of. Why can we get rid of them? These fives here can see that five and they, because it's in the same column and these fives can see that five because it's in, they're in the same block. Because they can see both that and that, they can be removed. Let's take these fives. These fives can see 
this five because it's in the same column and these fives can also see this five because they can see this and this they can be removed got it so that's it in a nutshell i'm now going to go on to another part of this session explaining a little bit more about conjugate pair now i want to explain to you what a conjugate pair is and what a matching pair is now most of you know now what a matching pair is but what about a conjugate pair you need to know conjugate pairs if you wish to go and do more advanced puzzles because they're used a lot particularly in things like uh, if you want strong this is a strong link so you can use it in change you can use it in so many other advanced puzzles like x wings etc now so basically the rule of a conjugate pair is simply this that in a row it only occurs twice this little little five it, in here it can it can be between and right right on the row can be here to here or can be here to here here we've got it from this one to this one here we have it from this one to this one within a block but here we have a conjugate pair on five because if you look at that you can see that the five is still repeated but that's the only place in that row you found them there are other numbers there but the five is it makes it into a conjugate pair on five now the difference between a conjugate pair and a matching pair is that this is a conjugate pair as well on four and on eight it could be a conjugate you could use it either for the four or, or for the eight but that that's why i call them matching pairs because they do match each other now a conjugate pair can be in rows it can be in columns and it can be in diagonals like it is down here on this block let's show you some of them in in, in the uh, in the columns okay now we have conjugate pairs in columns um, you can have a conjugate pair in columns and in blocks for example you could have a conjugate pair like this um, from here to here you can have a conjugate pair in blocks we can have it in in, in in columns this is a straightforward one between two fives it's the only two fives in that column in this case we have two fives in the column but because the other numbers are there it doesn't matter you have a conjugate pair on five here you've got a conjugate pair in a in a block and over here you have two conjugate pair on five and eight because it's a matching pair you could use a five or you can use an eight depending on the situation so that's a quick look at conjugate pairs let's put them in a bit of a puzzle okay okay here we have an open-ended chain with a strong weak and a strong and the interesting thing about this i don't know why they call it the turbo fish but the way it works is this way if this is true that is not true if that is not true this is going to be true if that's true this is false so because that was true this cannot be a five now let's take it the other way around if this was false that would be true that would be false and this would be true and because that's true this cannot be a five in both cases this cannot be a five see this um, five can see that five and this five can see that five so that's another justification keep in mind that when you're putting in a chain uh, one end is going to be true one end is going to be false in this case if that is false that is that is a five that's not a five if that's not a five that is a five if that uh, is a five that can't be a five but because that was true that was a real five this can't be a five but let's now take this as a false i'm just repeating again to get it clear if this was false this would be a five and this would be a not a five this and this would be a five so that because that would be a five this still cannot be a five so we can say eliminate this five okay here's another example coming up this is our final example of a chain in this case i'm using 
are strong links and weak links. The strong links are red and the weak links are bl is blue. Um, we start off here at an end point with a strong link from here to here because they are the only two nines in this block. Then we do a weak link from here to here because there are several nines in this area, in this row. So that's a weak link. Then we go from this down to this one, a strong link, and that's the end point. Now, having done that, we can call this a conjugate pair because the nine can only appear there and there in this column. We call this a conjugate pair because nine only appears here and here. But here's the interesting thing about a, a link like this. Um, it doesn't matter which way it goes, this cannot be a nine. Let me explain and show you. Let's say this was a nine. That can't be a nine. If this was a nine, that can't be a nine. That will be nine. And this cannot be a nine. So because of that was a nine and that was a nine, that became a nine. This be because that was a nine, this can't be a nine. Okay. Now let's do it the other way around. If this was not a nine, that would be a nine. That would not be a nine. And this would be a nine. And if that is a nine, doesn't matter which way it goes, that still can't be a nine. So it's very important to understand that, uh, that concept. Um, let me uh, try and explain it this way. This nine can see that nine, and this nine can see that nine. When this nine can see both nines, it cannot be a nine. That's another way of explaining it. I'll do it once again, but this time I'll do true and false. If this is true, which means it's a nine, that's false, that's true, that's false. But if that was true, this can't be a nine. If this is false, that's true, that's false, and this is true. If that's true, this still can't be a nine. So in both cases, this nine is eliminated. So that's it for today's session. Pretty complicated, but the key is to watch for con conjugate pairs more often from now on because I'm going to cover lots more of the patterns and things to watch for where conjugate pairs are involved. Have a great day. Bye for now.